Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you a video giving my thoughts on the third season of Stranger Things on Netflix. What's up you guys, Bloody Jacob here, as I've already said, here to bring you my thoughts on the latest season of Stranger Things on Netflix, which uh, just dropped uh, you know, the previous week or so. And yeah, I've been uh, pretty eager to get to this myself, although I'm not like some, uh, you know, as I've explained before, these types of uh, you know shows, I don't necessarily watch the whole season in one day. Um, you know, I, I really don't have the time to with a full-time job and even if I did even when I do I don't necessarily uh, prefer watching it that fast um, you know sometimes I'll watch you know a couple at a time maybe three if I'm really into something uh, and you know again have the time but I mean, most times I like taking like one or two at a time and sort of like steadily going through it uh, just so I can sort of appreciate and uh, you know savor all the different aspects and you know, developments of the show uh, which I think makes sense, uh, but if you're one that binges it and you really enjoy, uh, you know, viewing it that way, that's that's you. But for me, I just you know sort of like uh, you know just enjoying it as long as I can and uh, you know giving everything time to sort of uh, you know sit, you know at least to uh, to uh, some extent. Um, and now I, I never actually posted a review of season two, which uh, does bother me. I fully planned on like came out. Um, it just got pushed around, and then I just for some reason lost uh, my train of thought to do the video or something. Um, I apologize for that, but I, I did really like season two. Um, you know, everything they did at you know, the facility and you know, the whole uh, episode with Sean Astin and stuff like that, it was a really great season. Um, you know, there was uh, you know, some... I don't know, uh, you know, lower points to it, I, I guess, if you want to say that. Um, yeah, I bogged it down maybe a little more than season one, but I still thought season two was really great overall, maybe better. Um, uh, now season three, it's a, it's a different discussion really, because the show is in a really different place compared to uh, either of those seasons, really. Um, I mean, we start and uh, we have our characters actually sort of just uh, living our lives. Uh, this season probably has the lightest sort of feel of uh, the whole series, I think, at least until, you know, shit starts really uh, getting bad and, uh, you know, happening this season. Um, but you have, you get to see the kids actually sort of living their lives for once, which is uh, pretty refreshing. Um, and it just gives this season a, just a great uh, vibe to it. Um, it's like indulging itself more in those 80, 80s references, uh, sure. Uh, but it has this great energy and uh, sort of, you know, you could say synergy to it, too. Um, just the uh, feel of Stranger Things this season, right from the opening, was just uh, magnet magnetic for me. I absolutely loved Stranger Things Season 3. I thought it was a phenomenal, fantastic season. Um, only eight episodes. I, I believe the, uh, f the first season was uh, eight episodes as well, I, th I think. Um, and I know uh, season two is nine, something along those lines. Um, but I also will say that season three also felt like it had the fastest pace to it too. Um, you know, I've seen some people say uh, you know they like season one more because it was you know kind of uh, you know more ho more horror focused. The mystery was uh, you know kind of took a little more time to unravel because they're just getting you know to see this you know world and everything like that. Um, you know, I think it just depends on, uh, I don't know what you enjoy out of the show, really. Um, because season one definitely does feel more like a slow burn, which, I, again, I think sort of fits and applies to uh, the initial uh, you know, basis of the show that we have in that first season. Um, but this one, I feel like it's a you know, natural, uh, organic, um, 
angle of things that they feel the way they do in this season. And it still retains a lot of uh, that initial Stranger Things uh, vibe, I think, well, you know, sort of having it fit, you know, where the characters are at the uh, certain time of the show. Um, but yeah, I, I thought the pacing was uh, great this season. It was fast. There's, there's no, uh, I don't really remember any scenes where I felt like, okay, this is dragging on. Let's, you know, let's move along here or something. I never got those vibes with this season. I thought it was very, very fluent, very, uh, fluid, excuse me, very, uh, sort of uh, well played out. Uh, someone said that, that it felt more like a eight hour movie than it did, you know, like a broken up show. Uh, there wasn't really an episode that felt, you know, episodic or anything like that. It didn't feel like it sort of, uh, bookended in any episode until the, uh, you know, the finale. Um, I think that works really, really great for it. Like I said, uh, it's great seeing these characters, you know, sort of living their lives, you know, towards the start of the season. There's a lot of, uh, great humor in the season. It's also the funniest, uh, season in terms of character chemistry and just, you know, kind of how the show plays in general. Um, but all the humor just works so, so well. And then when s stuff starts getting serious, you know, more is unraveled, it's completely natural and it goes back to just a zero day and eleven is to everything and just you know, how she steps up front right away just goes right back into that so so effortlessly um because you could watch this and think okay is the humor a bit too much in this but no it actually you know jumps from uh point to point whenever it wants really um of course uh, my favorite character on the on the show has always been david harbour as uh you know detective jim hopper uh or sheriff excuse me uh, and he and Joyce Winona Ryder have a you know awesome uh, dynamic this season. Um, they're working together a lot more closely, and he got a lot he got a lot of banter with them, and sort of like an underlying uh, romantic interest, perhaps that may or may not be developed further. Um, but they're great; they played off each other so well. Whether they're arguing or or what or what that could mean, you know, who knows? <laughs> As it's addressed a little bit into the season. Um, David Harbour continued to uh, play my favorite character on the show, Hopper. Uh, he, he adopted sort of that Magnum P.I. look. <laughs> he's even called Magnum at one point you know, because of the, you know, the type of shirt he's wearing and the, you know, the mustache and everything like that. Um, th this isn't really a spoiler, but then you have some great humor with him uh, at the start because, you know, Mike and Eleven have you know, been, uh, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend for a while and, you know, Harbour wants to... Hopper wants to make sure the uh, door stays open three inches and everything, and there's a whole ordeal with that. Uh, David Harbour and uh, comedic scenes is just so, so good. And then, um, yeah, ironically enough, you know, as I said, this is the, the probably the funniest season of the show, and at least to start the lightest. Um, when the action starts happening in you know, sort of the back half, uh, it probably has <laughs> the most action of the series at the same time. Um, and definitely the most uh, physical fighting, that's for sure, which, uh, which I welcome, you know, being a fan of the movies, that kind of movies and, ugh, excuse me, genre, uh, genres I am. Uh, David Harbour is just so, so good. He sells the physicality of it. Um, you know, Harper, why do I say Harper? <laughs> um, Hopper is, you know, uh, you know, anger or more, you know, sort of psychological issues I sort of, uh, you know, pushes outward. Oh, but there's a lot more going on underneath the surface than that, as you know, if you guys watch the show. Um, this very fast of the characters is so, so good and endearing, and I uh, absolutely loved his, uh, his arc of the season. Um, and another highlight was, uh, you know, Steve working at the ice cream shop and meeting this, you know, girl Robin and everything like that. Uh, Steve Harrington, he has become a big fan favorite on the show. I would say, like, the biggest fan favorites on the show are probably Eleven, Hopper, uh, maybe someone like Dustin and then Steve. <laughs> uh, and I get it here, you know, he's actually one of the most well-developed characters of the series. Um, and it's all, again, felt really, really natural. It's banter with Rob and it's pretty fun this season. Uh, uh, their, uh, their connection deepened as it went on it was really enjoyable. And then just how much, uh, you know, Steve and Dustin have gotten to sort of rely on each other and see each other as like a you know, bigger brother and older brother type of thing. I just saw they, they talk to each other, so it's so, so good. Um, <laughs> there's, uh, there's something that's really, really great about, I don't know, 
in that ice cream shop and uh, the thing is it's all you know rainbow ice or whatever and so uh, sorry I'm thinking of other things right now it's almost four in the morning so it's all all pleasant until Erica we you know we have uh, you know one of the little sisters coming in and uh, she she really really blackmails him into or you know really knows how to negotiate into you know getting all these different samples and everything like that then uh, she ends up having to work with Justin later and it's just, it's just quite a bit of fun I, I was surprised how much I enjoyed every scene you know that involved all those characters but they really worked well sort of a group unit I feel like um, then you have Billy who is a big focus of the season as well I mean, I, I never really cared for the plot point of, you know, him getting with, uh, you know, the Wheeler mother and everything like that, but it develops into a lot more than that, at least on his end. And, uh, you know, I don't want to get into spoilers or anything, but they definitely made that character feel like more than just sort of that, uh, you know, dick bully and everything like that. Um... I will say, you know, I loved uh, pretty much every character this season. Uh, I, I, I will say, though, that Will, <laughs> uh, I feel like is my least favorite, especially of the kids. He just doesn't feel like he has much to do besides sensing when something dark is coming, and he, he, he almost doesn't feel like a character on his own. Um, he does have this issue this season where, you know, he sort of snaps at Mike and the others, you know, for abandoning him to, uh, you know, go see their girlfriends and everything like that and focus on, you know, their relationship issues. You know, he just wants to play, you know, dungeon, Dungeons and uh, Dragons all day. And, you know, I get it, it's, you know, it's tied back to his, pro his uh, trauma in uh, the Upside Down and everything like that, which he can get. And how he had like a severe amount of uh, you know damage you know with his childhood of uh, being through something like that, so he just wants to sort of uh, have that simplicity and be able to take that in you know whenever and as long as he wants. Uh, but you know he felt a bit you know frustrating. Again, there's not much he actually does on his own <laughs> in the show, besides again just sensing when something bad's coming. Um, so I don't know if they're gonna fix that or if that's just kind of you know what the character is. I don't know. Um, but I just gotta emphasize again just how good the season was. Like I said, it was the funniest. It really, really got you to uh, enjoy the characters in a way, and to an extent that you haven't really before in any other season. And at the same time, Lee's last couple, last few episodes are really, really super intense. And uh, the season ends on a really, really, really heartfelt note that uh, got to me emotionally. It really made it really uh, got me. Um, so it's just incredible how just how uh, easy Stranger Things uh, has done that in just eight episodes. Um, now I am going to go into uh, spoilers a little bit, but it'll be after I rate it here. And if I had to rate Stranger Things season three, uh, well, I just gotta say I'm I'm giving it about an A, maybe an A plus, around a ninety six percent. Yes, I thought it was that good. Um, like I said, I really like season one for what it was to start of the show. I really like season two, maybe a little bit more. And now I think season three is definitely the best season they've done. It's just had everything. There's no part of that drag, and it still felt like it was a well laid out story for its season. Um, so yeah, I could definitely bump it to an A plus, you know, 97% somewhere in there. Who knows? Definitely one of the best shows all year, and uh, the best season the series has had thus far. And again, I'm not going to go into every every spoilery sort of topic in this, but I did have to talk about our uh, big, you know, death at the end of the season, which was uh, Hopper as they go to close the gate, you know, and he ends up fighting the uh, big, you know, Russian, uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator kind of guy, um, who I didn't actually mention in my uh, spoiler-free section, who I should have, but he does have a passing resemblance to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Again, the action fights in this were actually pretty good. Um, I was surprised how much of it there were, um, and it really, really tied back to, I think, the core of the show, and that is the relationship between Hopper and Eleven there, and, uh, you know, they sort of, they're more accepting and referring to each other as, you know, daughter and, you know, dad and father and stuff like that, it really but heads at the start of the season, but really ties it back and pulls on the heartstrings in the finale, where Hopper, he, he just manages to kill Terminator agent in the end, but Joyce has to, uh, you know, turn the turn the triggers and everything like that and the blue rays all the scientists coming in there all the you know at least as far as I know most of the Russians and 
hoppers in there too but the thing is we don't actually see his body get physically obliterated like we did the others directly on screen um, we don't see any like blood or remains until we're in Joey's goes to see him I mean she just assumes he is you know, just wiped you know just gone but still very traumatic very emotional great acting from David Har David Harbour it's just amazing how he did such great comedic timing scenes this season then he just shows such great real emotion in his face from that last look he has to Joyce and but I, f I feel like Hopper is alive of course because the end credits seem to go to a Russian prison uh, they end up feeding someone to uh, you know Demogorgon who apparently you know, he still had out outside of the uh, upside down apparently uh, so that gives him something there. Uh, but I said no, not the American, so they don't open the door with the American and it now is that American Hopper. Could be, very likely. Some people are saying it's the doctor from the first season, Dr. Brenner. I'm not sure, but either way, I don't think Hopper's dead because, again, they didn't directly show Hopper, you know, being uh, obliterated or anything like that. And I feel like I was ready to see that too, but they didn't go for it. So I feel like Hopper's coming back, whether it's through the prison or maybe some people have said he's in the upside down or something. Uh, but yeah, my either way, my heart just uh, broke. You know, when he seen Eleven, realized from Joyce, sort of, you know that you know that Hopper's gone. It really got me. Then his letter they had, they had wrote to uh, Eleven, just how they edited that last sort of sequence and montage together, it was really really uh, beautiful and uh, again heartbreaking at the same time. But it, it's all really well worth it. I'm just I was crying. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's uh, just great when a show can do that to you. And, you know you're not even that ready to let it out like that then it just works it clicks and it delivers uh, so yeah I really really love Stranger Things season 3 I'm I'm pretty bummed that I have to wait maybe a year to see season 4 uh, great episodes um, gave me everything I wanted from a new Stranger Things season and uh, more that I wasn't expecting yeah I don't want to wait to watch more you know, I feel like I gotta click the next episode right now um, but it's going to be, be a bit of a way to show some Netflix's scheduling and everything like that, so it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, let me guys thought about Stranger Things Season 3. I think it's the best they've done. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.